So this next bit here is going to overlap a lot with what we looked at second half of class today, where we tried to convert uh, equations between rectangular and polar. And you guys are confused, you know, what does it look like? What does this tell me? So basically, you guys can graph circles, lines, things, and rectangular, and that's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Well, you can also get the same graphs in polar as well. Now, the equations look really goofy to us, and we have no idea what to do. So we can convert them into rectangular and go, oh, well, that's just a circle centered here with a simple little radius. Okay, so different equations and different um, coordinate systems for the same graphs. Okay, we're going to need these three things here for everything we do today. Okay, and we got this from basically just plotting a point and converting from um, rectangular to polar, polar to rectangular. Okay, now. This green thing here is how we're going to graph things. This is a polar graph. Okay, so we don't have an xy plane anymore. We have r's and thetas. So this guy is done in degrees. Some of them will be done in radians, obviously. And these little lines represent the radius. So, for example, if I wanted to graph negative 3, comma, 2 pi over 3. So I tilt this guy up to 2 pi, which happens at 120. The radius should be here, but that's a positive 3. So I'm going to kick it across the same line down to here, 1, 2, 3. So that's all I want is that dot right there. And that's how you use them. Monday, I'll give you guys a sheet with a bunch of these on there so you don't have to worry about trying to graph them in your notebooks. Okay. Over here, an equation whose variables are polar coordinates is called a polar equation. The graph of a polar equation consists of all points whose polar coordinates satisfy the equation. It's no different than saying, here's a rectangular equation for a parabola that shifted to the right two, and every xy that we plug into it gets on the graph. But these make sense to us. Polar is going to be the new thing you guys are learning. First one's this. Identify and graph the equation r equals 2. So you'll have a graph like this green one, but where is the radius 2? Okay, what, what does that mean? Is it at 30 degrees? What, whatever. Okay, so we're going to have to convert this. Now, yesterday we looked at how to, getting stuff, how to get stuff to r squared. So we said, well, if we do a little trick and we multiply every side, or each side, I guess, by an r, we can manipulate it so we can use something we've seen before. So if we do this, we can come over here and say, oh, well, an r squared is an x squared plus a y squared. Now you're kind of stuck. And you look at it and you say, well, what's an r? So you take this and you're like, well, okay, r is x over cosine. I don't really want to plug that in because I don't know how to work with cosines. I certainly don't want to complete the square with it. Okay, so getting it to r squared is a valuable strategy at times. In this case, it didn't work for us because we don't know what to do with that r there. What you want to do in this case, if you find that doesn't work because there's nothing you can do with this, is get rid of that and say, what's another way I can get to r squared without multiplying each side by r? Why don't I square both sides? Now I don't have to worry about having an extra little r over here, and I can just say, That's a circle. x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that's the identify piece. Now I just got to graph it. So find your circle equation on your yellow sheet. x squared, you can have the centers and whatnot, and it always equals r squared. That's it. Okay, so I'd give you one of these sheets. You'd say the center's at 0, 0. You know the radius is 2 because the equation was this. And that's it. Starts at the center, radius of 2, throw your circle in. 
So that graph there was just modeled by the polar equation r equals 2. So we use r's in rectangular, but those are radiuses. Okay. So I know we say r over 2 here. That's our radius. This is the equation we're graphing with it. All right. Next one. Identifying graph the equation r sine theta equals negative 2. So we look over here at our three main formulas, see if there's anything we can do. r sine theta, r sine theta, right there. This guy is as easy as saying, anywhere I see an r sine theta, I know that's a y. y equals negative 2. So I'm going to take the polar graph and transpose an xy axis on it. So here's x, here's y. y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line with no slope right there in the blue that you can see. Okay. You could manipulate this a little differently. You could multiply each side by r, um, see what that does for you. You could you know, do a couple different things, but that's ultimately you're going to get back to the easiest piece, which is just anywhere you see an r sine theta, it's a y. So they can be that simple. Next is this guy. So r equals 4 cosine theta. This guy does not have a little r in there right now. So you may say, well, I've seen an r cosine theta before. So if you can somehow get an r in there, you can do a substitution. You look at this and say it's just an r. I don't have anything over here for an r, but I do have an r squared. So this is going to go back to our first strategy. And the, the first thing you try may not work. You may have to try a couple different things. So if I multiply each side by r, get here, now I can do something. And r squared is that. And r cosine is just an x. Now we're going to complete the square. Notice how I swung the minus 4x over here with this guy. It's nice when you just have a y squared because you don't have to worry about that. So if you need to look up completing the square, uh, I put a video in the post. Go to Brightstorm, whatnot, but that's uh, prerequisite knowledge right there. Half of b squared is plus 4. I can't just add 4 to one side without adding it to the other. Uh, remember, you're never going to be subtracting something when you complete the square, because when you square it, it's always, always positive. Now you're going to use your favorite math F word. This guy will always factor as half of the B. And there you go. There's the equation. So this, R equals 4 cosine, really just turns into this circle right here. So we've done that piece. We just got to get a graph. There's the equation again. So the center is always opposite. And I'll call this radius so the R doesn't confuse you there. Radius is 2. Here's the center. Throw in a radius of 2. And you got it. That's it. Okay, that's going to be it for this little lesson here. Uh, I'd recommend going back and practicing those last five we did in 8.1. Um, make sure you understand these. You can look at some stuff in 8.2, uh, play around with a few of them, and we'll start looking at this on Monday. And there's some neat graphs that we can do in this coordinate system.